Thank you, Lord. Man, you churchy this morning, boy. You churchy. Hallelujah. That's your testimony. Brought me out. Lord, have mercy. I can hardly. Come on, just tell the Lord thank you. Come on, keep telling them thank you. My mind. My mind. What an awesome, awesome, what an awesome God we serve. This month I I want to start a new conversation with you. And I want to talk about I want to talk about love this month. Um, I don't necessarily need to talk about love yet from person to person, but this month I, I would like to talk about how God is loving you. My, my, my desire as a leader is that you will be refreshed to all the multifaceted ways that our human category can put together how God loves us and then be willing as we are a church of word of worship of word and witness that you will be willing to witness of that love to somebody else Sometimes all it takes is you telling somebody, you know, God's love. I heard a sermon yesterday it said is, for God so loved the world. And the preacher said, he said that God so loved him. He said he's so, he's so wide, you can't get around him. He's so high, you can't get over him. He's so low, you can't get under him. That God's love is so that we run right into it. And this month, I, this month, I pray that in our in our time of dialogue and discussion, a time of teaching and prayer, that we would really just hone back in on the fact that a lot of things change, a lot of things fade away, but His love 
never fails, never goes away. Can I get an amen on that? So I want to start, I want to start at a, at a famous passage of scripture that you know. It's Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I, I want to say again good morning to our visitor. Visitors who've come to share with us this morning and I know that it's Super Bowl Sunday. That's all I'm going to say about that until next Sunday. Um, and next Sunday, I have plenty, prayerfully, hopefully, to say about Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I'm going to wait till next Sunday to talk about Super Bowl Sunday. Romans chapter 5, and look at verse 8. Romans chapter 5. Man, let me tell y'all, y'all are blessing my bones. blessing my bones not just you're not just blessing my spirit this morning but this morning y'all blessing my bones i feel good this morning amen thank you so much for hearing the holy spirit and i've been praying for you amen i've been praying for these guys and um believe in the lord the best is yet to come for them and for us Amen. The Bible says this, just one verse, although I may speak about a few verses here. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 says, But God demonstrates, which means he is not done demonstrating, because it would say, But God demonstrated. But it said, God demonstrates, which means he's still showing some stuff. I can almost stop preaching right there. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I want to title this morning's message from this idea, His Love Made the Difference. Tell somebody his love made the difference. Father, we thank you that your love is yet squeezing on all of us in this moment. We thank you that your spirit is so prevailing in this room. Father, we are humanity that stands in need of reminding that you're not just a God that sits high, but you look low and you come low. And you reveal yourself where we are. And Father, this is how we, this is why we come to worship. Because on Sundays like today, how can the world say there is no God? Father, we believe because we feel you touching us all over. Now God, you're the only pastor. And you are the only preacher for your people. Edify us with your word and strengthen us in our heart of hearts. Give us divine clarity scriptural revelation that we may speak this word that you may speak through us now god let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight for you are our strength and our redeemer it's in the name of christ that we pray and the people of god say together amen you may be seated in the presence of the lord His love makes the difference. Born and raised in the swamplands of Louisiana, a young man started drinking and using drugs at an early age. When he turned 14 years old, his family moved to the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. And he remained there, he remained there until 2005 in August when Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast. He was trapped on his roof in the lower ninth ward with his wife, his twin girls, his mother-in-law when the levee broke and destroyed everything that they had. On that fateful day, his family perished. His wife died, his twin girls passed away, his mother-in-law passed away. But while he was yet there hanging 
on an antenna right outside of the house that was underwater, he whispered to God. He said, God, if you're here, if you're with me, spare me. And I promise you, I will live for you forever. God waited several hours. Several hours went on and this prayer persisted from this young man. And just before the sun was set that fateful day, a huge Coast Guard boat carrying thousands and hundreds of people spotted him waiting in the water. The boat only had room for one more. And when the Coast Guard operator took him by the hand and placed him on the boat, he said to him, my friend, God must really love you. This man has shared his story across the world. And with it comes a conversation, a sentiment that God's love made the difference. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8 this morning, Paul echoes a similar thought when he says, but God has commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And oftentimes we think that human good is what provokes the Lord to love us. Oftentimes we think that human ingenuity is what provokes the Lord to love us. Oftentimes we think that human judgment of what we consider to be right and just and pure and awesome is what we earn the love of God based on our actions, based on our good deeds, our good thoughts, our behavior based on our own consideration of what we would think to be right and pure and just we think we deserve to be loved by God but I need you to understand there is nothing beloved that you and I can do to deserve the love of God because sin has disqualified us from ever receiving the purified love of God but Jesus made a way ah that God has commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us oftentimes people think that it's what they're doing that's good that provokes however I need you to understand that this is not the case if God's love can make the difference in the life of this young man in the swamplands of, of, of swamplands of Louisiana it can be the difference maker in the life of anyone who understands the gift of God that has been commended on their behalf the love of God makes the difference in several unique and authentic ways if you just give me a few more minutes, uh, you allow me to share a few observations from this text. Are y'all with me? Number one, his love, his love is always, and I love this, the turning point. Get that. His love is always the turning point. God's love has the power to turn everything in our lives, in your life specifically, around. When Paul says, check, check out the text, the, Paul, the, the Bible says, but God. Yeah. Uh, in other words, there was something going on um, before. If we look at verse 6, we look at six, verse 6 says, of chapter 5, verse 6 says, for when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the young God. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone will even dare to die. But God. But God, but God, but God, it, it, but God presents a movement, a moment in time when the Lord of heaven does something for fallen humanity that we could never do for on our own. Paul in the text uses strong words in verse 6 and verse 7, strong words to express the deficiencies of humanity. Paul says that we are, number one, without strength. We are, number two, ungodly. We are, number three, sinners. 
Now, 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 let me just help us here. I don't want you to come, I don't want to come down on your psychosis in as much as to help you identify that all of us must have a self revelatory uh, 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 presentation to this point that all of us who are people of God, even people of God, especially people of God, all of us are without strength. All of us are ungodly. And all of us are sinners. Now I know you got a high imagination about yourself. That's good. Self-esteem is important. But listen, when the rubber meets the road, who you are under that layer you present to other people, you are still without strength. You are still ungodly. And you are still a sinner. And it helps us to receive this antidote, this revelation. It helps us to receive this sense of identifiable character trait flaw that, that, that Paul gives us. All of us are without strength. All of us are ungodly. And all of us are sinners. We lack the power to live as we all, even though we may have the power to live uh, on our own standards, we lack the power to live according to the standards of God. And we lack the attitude of reverence and holy awe which also corrects our understanding of God's, of, of God's person, requires and demands. We lack the, capa the capability to hit the mark and achieve the divine expectations. Our pitiful description will hardly move any mankind of love and failure, but God's love is demonstrated in the supreme sacrifice of what he lays on the line for you and me. And he has laid on the line himself. Let me go deeper with that. Let me go deeper with that because you remember this scripture in Ephesians chapter 2? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, you will hear these words. But God, there it is again, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with, with, with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive with Christ by grace you have been saved now I don't know how we think about that shouting that's shouting scripture right there because because literally literally what Paul is trying to tell all of us is there was a bad diseased uh, infirmity dysfunction flawed we were all jacked up with no answer no rescue no way out doomed for hell we were sinners and by and by, and by God's right sinners go to hell sinners die sinners perish sinners don't have everlasting life they have eternal damnation but God loves us so that he says I have such a love for them I'm going to interrupt their final destination and give them another expectation Can I just tell you, without being overly deep or theological, that's the gospel. That's, that's the gospel. That's the gospel in simplicity. The fact that if you don't have nothing to share to people, as you witness this week, as you share on your jobs, if you share on social media, if you don't have, just share the fact that you know what? I, my life, as your folk would say, I had a severe case of the can't help it. had a severe case of the can't help this. I couldn't help lying. Couldn't help cheating. Couldn't help doing stuff in my flesh. Had a severe case of the can't help. Paul says in Romans chapter 7, go read it every time I want to do good. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. Every time I have the mindset to do good, I keep on doing what I don't want to do because there's a war going on inside of me for my soul. And God says that even though you are struggling and straining, I'm going to provide providence to help you get over the hard spots in your life. That while we were yet sinners, God has given us Christ Jesus to give us a spirit of overcoming. I don't know why you love him. You love them for the cars, for the houses, for the boo or the bay. You love them because of your name and your reputation. Let me tell you why I love God. I love God because I know me. 
and I know what parts of me ain't right. See, y'all acting real funny. A few minutes ago, y'all was turning around, hollering, and if you're honest this morning, you know you as well, and you know how bad you are, how crazy you are, how jacked up you are, how selfish you are, how, how attitudinal you are, and the Lord keeps on loving you in spite of you, and you won't tell them thank you. This, 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 this whole idea in verse 8, but God, uh, that these two words are overflowing with the gospel. Because all of us in here are saved because of but God moments. I'm about to get up out of here. Because some of you were heading in the wrong direction with the wrong people calling it love, calling it lust, calling it feel good, and but God stepped in. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Some of y'all were heading toward the wine bottle. Some of y'all were heading toward the joint. Some of y'all were heading toward the, I wish I had help in here, depression, but God steps in and gives you enough of his virtue, enough of himself to keep your mind together, to help you to not hurt yourself. I thank God for the but God moments in my life. God specializes in intervening. That's what it is. It's a divine intervention. You know what an intervention is, don't you? An intervention is when another source from an unknown place steps in and takes up residence where something should have happened, it won't happen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And that's what God has done to all of us in here. That's why I can't figure out how folk be sitting there like God does. Like they're so entitled, no responses, no sense of, you know, uh, expression. You know, because when somebody, you know you deserve to, why God to be whooped, to be put down, to not have nothing, to not have nobody. And look at you now, smelling good, looking good, sitting good, riding good, living good, got money in the pocket good. And you know you can't do all that by yourself. So you, you are here because of the but God moments in your life. These two words, but God, to me, to me, to me, to me, they are the gospel. They are the gospel. Because when I was, when I was sick and in sin, Psalmist says, uh, 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 sinking in sin far from the what peaceful shore deeply staying within far from but but the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry from the water he now say it was that what when no one else could help it was that what and so some of us walk now, walk around like we don't lost our best friend, your countenance, how you carrying yourself. I mean, you're just giving the devil way more credit than what he deserves. Because when you know who got you and who had who has had you, you know you, you, you know that the love of God in your life has never failed you. So you ought to always be, Lord, I'm thankful for the but God moments <laughs> in my life. Are y'all walking with me? And so, and so I want to I wanna move, not only, not only his love uh, always is a turning point, but number two, his love always touches. His love always touches. It's in the text. It's in the text, verse 8. But God, but God, verse 8, but God who was what? What happens in verse 8? He says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us. He, 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 he commends, he demonstrates. When Paul says he commended his love toward us, or he demonstrates, it is the picture of broken pieces. In the Greek, it is, it is a picture of broken pieces in a potter's house being placed together again to make a masterpiece. That's the Greek grammatical uh, 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 phrasing of that, is that there are pieces scattered. Uh, pieces that maybe they belong together but they are not a part of one another 
And what happens is, is that this love is, is, is a gathering love. And what he does is that it brings things together. And it, it, and, it, and it makes something wonderful out of something, watch it, that was shattered. I want to talk to those in the room, maybe you've gone through seasons where your life seemingly feels shattered. Maybe you've gone through instances and you've had things going on relationally or, or even financially or mentally where things appear to be uh, shattered. Uh, the, and and, and, and be, something being shattered isn't always the same as something just being broken. Because you can break something and it break in two pieces and two pieces are easier to put back together than shattered pieces. Oh, some of you have gone through the kind of storm where literally life just left, just left your stuff every which away. You ever had glass shattered? Take some time to figure out. You can come back three, four days and still find glass. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. Because a shattering in your life literally means uh, there was an explosion of things uh, out of control. Ooh, what I love about God is that God knows, watch it, where every piece landed. He knows where every piece scattered. He knows uh, where every piece went. Uh, so if anybody is qualified of going to get the piece that you can't see and putting it back together in the whole, God specializes. His love serves as polygrip. Can go find uh, whatever piece you can't see. Uh, and it's a missing piece to put your life back together. My God, uh, that's why I'm trying to tell somebody in the room uh, that in this hour of your life, uh, you've got to trust God like you never have before. Because God is specializing in this season in putting your life back together in unique places in places you can't see I know the divorce was bad but God is putting your love back together I know your children being on drugs was bad but God is going to put them back together again I know your bankruptcy thought you can never buy nothing again but I'm a living witness God can put your money back together again do I have any company in the building that the Lord reserves the right of knowing what the pieces of your life are and what what you need to do is completely and totally, my God, submit to him and the potter will put you back together again. He's able to do it. Go ahead and tell somebody he's able to do that. You can't do it, but he can. You, I don't care how you stress, how you call people, how you get on social media. You cannot do it, but God can. God can put your life back together again. And if your life is not over, it's just getting started. Because when God puts your life back together again, he puts it back in broken pieces where people, where yet you're back together, but people still see your scars. They still see your cracks. They still see your deficiencies and you can't walk out of here like you got it all together you know that the only thing holding your broken pieces together is the love of God the only thing holding your pieces together is the peace of God the only thing holding your mind together is the peace of God do I have in a company in the building that is God that holds me together it's God that keeps me it's God that wraps me it's God that insulates me it's God Maybe in this hour of your life, maybe you've gone through everything you've gone through to get you back to a place where you can just confess it's God. Maybe things broke apart. Maybe they went the way that they did. Maybe it didn't go the way you expected it. Just to get you back to a place of announcing to you Announcing to yourself, it's God. And if whenever you build, whatever you build on God, it's always built to last. Huh. Just like look at this ministry. Been here 12 years. We've gone through some ups and some downs. We've gone through some, like every ministry does. But I said, Lord, I don't know how to lead them people. I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to be a good father. I don't know how to be a good husband. I don't know how to do these things. 
Because, it's, because I've never seen it. I just, I'm just living day by day asking you to keep my pieces together. I'm just, I'm just asking because I know me. I know my sin. I know my want to. I know ways I don't want to do right. I know ways I don't want to talk right. And so God, when I get up, help me today. Just keep my pieces. Because if you keep my pieces together, when they see me, they don't see some grand thing that's never had a storm. What they see me in all my cracks and imperfection, they see me together. But then they understand it's by the grace of God, the goodness of God. The, oh, I wish I had help in here. The love of God. Because I don't know why my piece is together and your piece is together. All I know is that I need God to keep my pieces together. Anybody got that confession? Lord, help me hold my pieces this year. Help me, help me keep my pieces together. Uh, so his love always touches. And that's, and that's the blessing this morning. The blessing is that we have a father who's always touching. And this is what God loves does for us. He takes broken pieces and he touches them. He blesses them. He breathes upon them. And he creates a masterpiece. Stop being ashamed of your story. Huh. Because what else will point to God's ability than you being exhibit A? B, C, D, E, F. I'm sick of being in church where everybody holy. And everybody right. Everybody on top. Everybody wonderful. No, that's not realistic to me. That's not even biblical to me. I, I, I want to be a part of a church where people are real and authentic. And some Sundays we might just come in and realize, oh, oh it's a week that our pieces got out of order. We got to work on getting our pieces back in perspective. Because if the truth be told, every week ain't a good week. Every week not a good week. Some weeks I would have slipped. And somebody cut me off, I'm trying to get to work, I put that finger on them. I put that finger on them. Now don't you see my car? Y'all looking at me like that, you got that finger too. I need, I need God's help. That's why I come to service. Because I, I cannot afford, my peace is so fragile, I cannot afford to miss an opportunity for him just to hold me together. So I got to keep coming. Because if I miss, it may be a worse situation the next time if I stop coming. I'm, listen, I'm dependent on God. Oh God, I'm trying to get out of here. I, 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 I am dependent on God. I'm a God junkie. Let me just confess this here. I am a God junkie. I am stuck on God. I don't want to go nowhere. I'm sprung on God. I love God. I'm not ashamed of God. Do I have the company in the building? I wish there were about 20 more people in here that were some God junkies. Some people who can't breathe if they don't have them. Can't see if they don't have them. Can't talk if they don't have them. It's in Him that I live, I move, and I have my being. If this is you, somebody say yeah. yeah. Let me get us out of here. Not only is his love the turning point, not only does his love always touch, but number three, his love is always right on time. I ain't trying to be deep with you. His love is always on time. Listen to it in the text. Listen to it in the text. He says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Do you see the timing? Listen, while is a transitional word. While we were sinning, which means something is happening. Something is happening. Something is still happening right now. If your mind on who you was with last night, more than your mind on God right now, you sinning right now. You 
You texting at 3 a.m., get off the phone at 3 a.m. <laughs> while, while we were still sinners, while we were sinking, while we were falling, while there was no remedy, there was no help, there was no hope, while we were sinning, Christ died for us. His love is always on time. God has a holy habit of showing up when all hope seems like it's lost. I just think that's how he is. I think sometimes he sit up in heaven. I don't want to speak for him like that. But he looked down on us and he's like, you know what? I'm just going to let them, I'm just going to let them go through the course of this. They ain't listening. They don't want to pray. They don't want to talk to me. I'm just going to let them go through this course. And he waits till you get to the end of yourself. And you all, oh Lord, what am I going to do? What are we going to do? How are we going to make it? What are we going to do now? I mean, he waits till you get to the end of the road. Your back is up against the wall. And you feel like you're going to fall. Then he say, go and get her out of that. And shake his head like this. <laughs> While we were sinners, Christ died. But here it is. Here it is. His remedy or his fix has already, because everything talks about the present. He demonstrates. That's now. Why we're sinning. That's now. Watch it. He died. That's past. So this one act of dying has now and future ramifications it is, a, it is a participle which means it was a one time act with continuous uh, 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 reverb refurb from that one time act his one time death keeps you going not just today tomorrow next week six months from now 2021, 2022, 2023. His one-time death keeps wor keeps working for you now and in the future. Yeah. And you trying to tell me you ain't got no shout on that? You ain't got no thank you Jesus on that? You ain't got no hallelujah on that? You ain't got no Lord I love you on that? Because his one-time work keeps on bailing you out. Yeah. In other words, Christ, in other words, Christ did not wait on us to get right with God. That's what the text says. Christ did not wait on us. God did not wait on us to get right with him. He says, while you were sinning. He didn't wait on you to, to confess. He said, that because, because that will never happen. So he became us in order to save us. And he did it while we were sinning. Now I don't know about you, but that's love. That's love. Because he, he decided he decided, seeing you wallow in the nasty mess that you made for your life. And seeing you stay stuck in the, in, in, in the results of what sin does to a life. He says, I love them so much. I'm going to go to them in the mess they're in. I'm going to become one of them to get them out of it. Y'all don't miss what I'm saying. I think every now and again we need to come back and deal with the fundamentals of the faith like the love of God because we get insensitized the way we throw around love to what real love actually look like. So his love is committed toward us that while we were saying God's love, uh, the love of God is a life changer. Uh, uh, it left this man from Louisiana and guess what? He lost his family. But the story goes on to tell he got a new family back. He married again, had more children again. Because a disaster does not mean destruction. It can sometimes mean the dawning of a new day. And I wish I had about five people in here who will understand not everything you go through is, is to bring your, 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 your esteem down, your faith down. No, it just means God's expiration time clock is done with where you at. He's got to remove you and put you in a new space because there's purpose for you in another place, not just in the place you was in. <laughs> what do you mean, Pastor? 
I'm just saying sometimes, beloved, we got to be okay with what God allows. Spiritual Christian maturity knows how to just be okay with what God allows. In my prayer every day, Lord, give me this day our daily bread. Forgive me my sin. Forgive my debt to our leaders, not temptation. But I said, Lord, just help me be okay with what you allow today. Don't let it push me out of character. Don't let, don't let it make me something I don't want to be or believe I should be. So God, keep my pieces together in such a way that I can love and do right in spite of how I feel. Because if you're honest, your feelings sometimes can be demonic to your, to your, to your well-being. Sometimes you got to put your feelings in check and say, I don't care how I feel, I know God. And knowing God says his love, love, God's love will make me feel like this. Maybe my disobedience, maybe something else, maybe, maybe, maybe it's because I am doing right. And you, do, you got to remember, sometimes doing right will bring a, will bring a spiritual warfare. Choosing right brings spiritual warfare. Living right will bring spiritual warfare. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers in, high, in heavenly places. So be confident that the God who started with you will finish with you. I get out of here now. Remember Joseph? Joseph with his brothers. He out there doing right. Found favor from his father. Had a code of what? Blessed man. Somebody say blessed man. Brothers hated that. So you know what this boy, he young, he young, the youngin, he just on my neck, the young whippersnapper, he in the way. He in the way. So they gonna plot. So they first of all, they gonna throw him in a pit. He outlived that, they gonna, they gonna give him, they gonna slave, they gonna sell him into slavery. And he eventuates himself into prison. Finds himself in the pit by doing right. By doing right. But he didn't get bitter. He didn't go crazy. He didn't turn his back on God. He listened to God. He stayed patient with God. He went through his process. And from part, what the part of the house was getting molested in part of his house. And so from that situation, now he finds himself working for Pharaoh. Now his brother's back on the scene and they need his help. They thought it was dead. He says to them, I can't even go out like that. It's just been a part of my story. What the devil meant for evil, what you meant for evil. God turned it around for good. Oh Lord have mercy. I, this morning beloved, I'm just trying to get us to understand that no matter where you are in your life right now, no matter what has gone bad, no matter what's not what, where you want it to be, it does not mean the story is over. God and the love of God makes the difference. Keep trusting him. Look at a name and say, that's all I got, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. I thank you. Keep trusting him. And who in here knows that God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. If he spoke it, will he not manifest it? I wish I had somebody in here that knows I can trust the word of God. Yeah, I can trust the word of God. I can depend on the word of God. I can look to the word of God. I can lean on the word of God. I can go to sleep because of the word of God. Tell somebody, I got everything I need. I found it in the word. And I found in the word that the Lord loved me so much that he sent his son to die for my sin. And I'm thankful for that this morning because if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, death would have swallowed me up. But the love of the Lord made a difference for me. Shucks, I don't get crap in my own sneakers this morning because I know what I don't deserve. But God keeps on being God. He keeps on opening doors. He keeps on making a way. Do I have any company in the building? Tell, you, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's been the love of God that made the difference in my life.
the love of God that made the difference in my life. His love is the turning point. His love is one of because of what he touches. What he touches. And his love is so powerful because it's never late. It's always on time. I don't want to celebrate that out of here from the standpoint of shouting you or provoking you. I want you to walk out of here with a revelation of knowing this is who I have. This is who I'm living with. And this month we're going to dive deeper and deeper into the love of God. Don't just hold it for yourself. Share it with somebody. Share it with somebody who needs to come in an awareness, need to hear about what the love of God is doing in your life. Not to be braggadocious, not to make yourself higher than others, but to simply say, God is no respect of persons. I know I may look good, but I'm so thankful that somebody wrote a song, I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look like what I've been through. And if that's you, you can say, well, Lord, I think that I'm thankful that you preserved me the way that you have. Because some folk go through what I've gone through and maybe they lose their whole life. But you've been that good to me. And for that, I'm really, really thankful. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. If you're in this place right now, I want the ministry technicians to hold, keep the lights where they are. I want the ministry technicians to hold the door. And this morning, I want to pray for 